Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. Sometimes we can work with some pretty complicated stuff in Anime Studio, and this can refer to both objects and bones. So sometimes, like in the example here, Let's say you have two shapes on a layer that are intersecting. So we have a nose here and then we have the eye right here. So this is just for an example, just for demonstration purposes. But let's say that you're trying to click on a point for the nose, but you keep accidentally grabbing the eye point because if you look right here, they're very close together. So let's say you're trying to get in there and you're just trying to fine tune things and you're having a hard time grabbing that point. Well, with Anime Studio 10, you can now hide points when you are working, which can make things a lot easier when it comes to grabbing objects or animating things out. So there's a couple ways you could go about this. First, let's say you want to grab the point on the eye. Well, you could select the nose like I have here and then go up to draw, hide selected points. You can see now that those points are hidden from the nose and I can continue now to come in here and adjust the eye if I wish. The points are still there on the nose, they're just hidden. Now the thing about this is if you decide then to do some point animation you won't have any of those points that are hidden show up on the timeline. So this can be a great way to isolate and then animate things out while not worrying what will happen to other points with other shapes in your layer. So there's one way to do that. And if you want to bring your points back, simply go back up to draw and show all points. And that will bring your points back for the nose. So let's say you're having another issue. Let's say you can gain access to one shape, but maybe you have a lot of shapes going on at once and it's hard to isolate exactly the points that you want. What you could do is you could click on that shape and then you could go up to Edit, Select Inverse. You can see now that will select all the points that you don't have selected on that particular layer. So in this case, the left eye and the nose are now selected. The original eye I selected is now deselected. And then from there, you could go up to draw and then hide selected points. And you can see now the points are hidden from that eye. The only points that are visible are on this right eye right here. So those are two things you can do when it comes to hiding and showing points. Now, as I said, you can also do this for bones. So let's click on this bone layer here for this character and zoom out. Now you can see that we have some animation already here in the timeline. It's just a simple animation for the, uh, for the character. But let's say for whatever reason, there comes a point where you only want to work on or show a certain bone group. Well, we could take the select bone tool and highlight some bones here, just like that. So let's say you want to work on that arm. And what you could do then is go up here and you could do the select inverse thing again so that all of the other bones are then selected and then go up to bone and then hide selected bones. You can see now that all those bones are hidden, they're still there, they're just hidden for right now, and then you could work on that certain group if you wanted to. Now, the cool thing about this is you can really isolate your bones. So only the bones visible right now will be affected by what you do, meaning all the other bones, while they're still there, won't have any keyframes applied to them when you are working this way. And a good way to demonstrate this is to keep an eye on the timeline. Right now, those bones I just hid are still hidden. And if I go back up to bone and then show all bones, keep an eye on the timeline, you can see now all those keyframes come back because that's showing all the bones going on. So not only is this a good way to reduce clutter, 
it's a good way to isolate certain elements when you are animating more complicated projects. And I think when it comes to working with the bones, you'll definitely find this to be of use, especially now with the combined bone tools, because sometimes you may find when you're trying to grab a certain bone with your handles, if you have certain bones closer together, it might be harder to grab the exact handle you want when the bones are so close together. So now you can just simply hide a bone and then you can work with that other bone without issue. So anyway, definitely check it out if you are looking at more complicated projects and you need less clutter. And if you'd like more information on Anime Studio, please visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time.